Conversation with your girl Shay Kenya. When you get a minute, go to that YouTube channel Shay Kenya. Hit subscribe. Look at some of the videos. And if you see something you like, just hit share. Quit playing with me. Quit playing with me. <laughs> I see you peeking. You can come in. Shit, y'all check me out every day. I'm some of y'all's guilty pleasure in the morning, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But yeah, show your girl some love. I want you to go that extra mile. I want you to really support. Yes, I don't want you to just look at the videos. I want you to go to the YouTube channel. Click subscribe. Look at a video, video, video. Just binge it. Just binge while I get you some popcorn and just binge watch all the videos. And I guarantee you, one or three of them gonna hit home with you. One or three. At least three. Three is the magic number. Gonna hit home with you. It's gonna remind you of something that's going on in your life, your situation, or it's gonna remind you of somebody else's situation that you wish you could probably tell them about, but you can't. So you can share my video and let me tell them. <laughs> let me tell them. Let me tell them for you. So today, guys, you know, I don't even come on on no Sunday. I don't come on on no Sunday. But I asked y'all a series of questions. Friday. So now that you don't have like a day or so to think about it, I don't know. I guess I want to recap with you because I don't want to move further in the syllabus and get some of y'all lost because some of y'all know I don't come on on Friday and Saturday. You, I miss something, and then when you come in Monday, you like, <gasps> what I miss? I ain't gonna do you like that. I ain't gonna do you like that. So safe way of doing coffee and conversation was just to backtrack on Friday. Yeah, that when you ain't really missing too much. Because this it really didn't need to be recapped. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. The questions that I asked you, they pretty much self-explanatory. Like, it, you know, I don't want to make you feel less than a parent or make you feel bad or anything by recapping. But it ain't going to hurt none. Yeah, it ain't going to hurt none. So the first one was... I asked you, do you smoke cigarettes or any type of um, substance around your children under the age of 21? Now, if you answered no to that, hooray. <laughs> if I ain't had to tell you that to do that, you already knew because you don't want to contribute to the delinquency of a minor. You don't want to instill any bad habits with this baby. Yeah, because it's sad that you ain't know no better. And and I'm not condemning anybody. I'm not judging anybody. That's why I said it was safe to do this on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to make... I, that's Because that's not what I'm here for. No, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously here just to help. These videos are just to help. So if any of them make you feel bad or make you feel some kind of way about your parenting style, you got time to change it. You know what I'm saying? Because if you feel bad about it, obviously you feel like there's a need for change. So if you do it on my court, that's what I'm here for. I'm not here to intentionally make you feel any kind of way. And I'm not here definitely to judge you. I got my own issues going on. I, you know, I, I can't judge nobody. Who am I? Who am I to judge you? Yep, I got things going on too. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm not here to do that. But if I can help you in any kind of way, I hope I can. Now, the first one smoking, and, you know, around your baby. Yeah, that's a bad habit. You know, when we was growing up in school, you know, they showed us pictures of lungs, what they look like after somebody has been smoking for a period of time. I'm quite sure you know somebody who's probably died of cancer as a result of smoking cigarettes. So just as a child, that's just a habit that I never indulged in. Like, it hurt me that my mama smoked cigarettes. I used to hate that she smoked cigarettes among other things that she did but definitely the cigarette smoke i hated the way that it smelled i just i knew that what it was doing to her lungs and her health so that's just a habit that i never wanted to pick up you know so i made a conscious decision not to smoke i don't smoke nothing around my children under the age of 21 and i tried to make sure people around them the people i brought in contact with them the influences that i brought into their life 
didn't smoke around them. I had one baby daddy that smoked, and I hated that. It made me so mad. He used to always say he was going to quit, but he ain't never quit. But I was so mad. That was the only person I think I dealt with or was with that um that probably smoked. Yeah, but I used to make him go outside some days because I just didn't like it. Good morning, baby. So, yeah, that was one thing. So, I tried to minimize. I'll say that because I'm not going to say everybody because he did smoke, but he was probably the only one that I had that I could think of at this time that I could think of. But, yeah, so I tried to, to, to minimize that to the best of my ability as far as people drinking or smoking around them. And then drinking, I'm going to lead into the next one. Do you drink alcohol around your children? So smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol around your children under the age of 21 is contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Yeah. So you shouldn't do it. They are bad habits and it's a chance that if you're doing it around your baby that they can pick it up. So your job as a parent is to make sure that your child don't don't have certain things around them that's tempting. You know what I'm saying? Like drug people, people that's using drugs, people that's drinking, people that's smoking. Like you definitely don't want that image around your baby because it's easier for them to pick it up. Now if they pick up these habits anyway, so be it. You are not your child's only influence. I'll say that. You know, they might pick it up from the neighbor up the street whose children that they play with in the afternoon. They probably smoke, you know. But as a parent, you do the best you can to minimize those things. The next question I asked you was, do you curse around your babies? Do you curse at them? Do you curse? Yeah, I know. Under the age of 21, I cuss at my grown kids. But I try not to cuss at the babies. And I tried not to cuss around them when they were little. And I definitely didn't curse at them. Like calling them out their names and stuff like that. Definitely didn't do that. Yeah, that can play on a child's self-esteem. Definitely plays on their confidence. Yeah. I just, I just, I, I, you know, because I got a potty mouth. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not going to lie to you about that. I have a potty mouth, but I pray on it. I try to watch what I say. I ask the Lord to hold my tongue when I'm about to cuss. And I think before I speak. And that minimizes me from um, cursing. But yeah, I definitely don't do it around the children. I try to minimize people around them. Influences I brought into their life from doing it as well. So, Next question was, how often do you tell that baby that you're going to do something for them and actually do it? That's a big thing. You definitely don't want to disappoint that baby. Cause that's what it leads to if it's a situation where you do everything you say you're gonna do that's a beautiful thing because they'll pick up on that and it's a good chance that if you keep your word that your baby might keep theirs when they tell people they're gonna do this and that and the third now when it gets to a point where you're promising this baby all these things and you don't come through and you don't fulfill those wishes yeah now you're contributing to a uh, disappointment that's something you don't want your baby to carry moving through life it's a good chance they can pick up on that in a way to where it's hurting them that you don't do what you say but also they can get to a point where word don't mean nothing to them and they do the same thing that you do they don't picked up on that from you so if it's okay for you to say you're gonna do something and don't do it then they very well feel it's okay for them to do it as well so now you got a child running around here that it's not a person of their word that was something i was raised on you gotta i gotta be a woman of my word i gotta do what i say i'm gonna do and I try to. I fall short sometimes. I'm not going to hold you up on that. And I don't talk to a couple people out here. I was going to do something and probably didn't get a chance to do it. And probably got around to it late. I've done that. But I try not to. I try not to overbook myself. I try not to overextend myself. And I try to be in a position to where if I say I'm going to do something, I, I very well try and put forth effort to doing so. Yep. So I've disappointed some people in my lifetime, but I try not to. You know what I'm saying? I try to put effort into not doing so. Yep. So when it comes to your children, I, I try desperately not to. If I couldn't do something, I let them know I couldn't do it. And I let them know the reason why. Yeah, some of y'all just tell y'all kids no and keep it moving. And it is what it is. You're the parent. You're the child. I say what I'm going to say. I'm dominant. Bam. Not me. I've always been a parent. That communicated with my children so if it's a situation where I'm not able to do whether they're gonna be mad about it or not I let them know the reason why I'm not able to do it and if it's something that I can't do that I can do at a later date I let them know that as well so very open and very transparent with my children hey John drama how you doing baby Mwah. always a pleasure to see you young man always a pleasure thank you and then the next one was do you argue with your mate in front of your ch your children yep you argue 
that causes, see all these things that I'm mentioning to you can contribute to childhood traumas. These are things that your children experience and they hold on to until they become adults. And then now they got mental issues and they breaking down and you don't know what's going on with them because these things were never solved when they were little. They were never taken care of. They were never dealt with. They were probably swept up under the rug like most people do and that's it. And you just got to live like that. But you ain't got to, yeah. So now that you know arguing in front of your baby contributes to childhood trauma, you definitely want to stop doing that. Yeah, but if it's to a point where you, I'm going to be honest, if I had to argue with my dudes back in the day, we would go outside and sit in the car. We would scream to the top of our lungs. We would holler. We would cuss each other out. We would do whatever we had to do. But when we came back into that house, everything was civil. My kids didn't witness that type of stuff. Yeah, we had probably a few little incidents where they had to uh, witness some stuff. And I had to apologize later. And it might have contributed to some trauma. But I definitely dealt with it. It wasn't nothing that I just swept up under the rug. You know what I'm saying? So understand that. Because I'm not perfect. I know I come on here every morning and share with y'all different things. But no, I'm not perfect. No, I'm not. But I minimize stuff. And I learn from my mistakes. And I try not to repeat them twice. There's a lot of stuff that I do <laughs> that helps me. And I hope I help you. So yeah, do you argue in front of your children? And do you physically fight your mate in front of your children? Yep, those contribute to childhood traumas. Yep, those are domestic violence situations. So chances are, if you are doing that type of stuff in front of your baby, either they're going to pick it up, and now they're going upside their ladies' heads, or they're cussing their dudes out, and they're trying to physically fight him every chance that they get, or they're going to end up in a situation like that. Your daughter's going to end up with a dude that go upside her head and put her in her place every time she get out of line. Your son gonna end up with a daughter that fights him and always every time you look up, she jumping and challenging him and his, yeah, it's a good chance because that's the lifestyle that you don't expose your baby to. So that's the lifestyle that they live in. So they're gonna probably continue that lifestyle in one form or the other. So yeah, you don't wanna do it. And I think what was the last one? That might've been the last question. Oh, do you talk to your babies when they get home from school and figure out how their day was? And do you talk to them about your day? So they can see how you deal with your issues and how you get through whatever challenges you have on a daily basis. Communication is very important to your babies. And it does contribute to childhood trauma if you do not communicate with them. Because that means your child has problems and issues that's going on inside that's festering. That you, if you would have took the time out to talk to them when they got home from school, hey Terry, to figure out what they was going through and what they was dealing with, you could have very well helped them disarm that problem and talk them down or help them with helpful advice to help them get through it to where that's not another problem that's being swept up under the rug that they can't control or can't do nothing about or you know <sighs> that's it y'all for coffee conversation with your girls okay yeah it's sunday i'm about to get over there to that house finish it up so i get my little money and uh that's it y'all shit that's my day i'll come back on so y'all can see me at work hey philando how you doing boo did y'all check the show out friday y'all know i don't like crossing my channels because you know i got like nine different pages let me share with you what they are. I got Attitude Adjustment, which is the youth program where I deal with children with behavior issues. They have their own page. I have Motor City Radio, which is my radio show that comes on Friday. We are a platform for black-owned businesses. It has its own page. Sexy Shikenya has its own page. You can go on there and see me looking not like this. Has its own page. Uh, I'm just a girl. Where I go in when I do my construction work, when I'm in people's houses and I'm demolitioning and all that. They have their own page. So make sure you go to I'm Just a Girl. Um, what other pages do I have? Hey Black Man, where I celebrate our black men. Go on that page. It's positive quotes and pictures all about our black men on that page. So you might want to go to that page and check that page out. Let me see. Attitude Adjustment, Motor City Radio, Dysfunctional Family Night. If y'all didn't know, I have a book out. Loosely Around My Life. It talks about things that I experienced and what I went through growing up as a child. And then I have journal entries to talk to you and show you what I was going through while I was writing the book. I went through divorce while I was writing the book. I was still trying to finish school while I was writing the book. And I was trying to get some of these businesses that I have currently running right now off the ground while I was writing this book. And I talk about all that. The book was therapy for me and it helps me get through some of the issues that I dealt with growing up as a child in my adulthood. So, yeah, check on all them pages. But definitely check out Motor City Radio because we was on Friday. And if you watch Tubi, any other Tubi movies, check out The Plant. We had the whole cast of The Plant on Motor City Radio. We had Jacote Films in the building. So, yeah, if y'all just think I got a rinky-dinky show and I'm in the basement <laughs> on my live, that's not what it is. And that's not what we got going on. We actually have a show in a studio at the Vent Radio Network under Glenn Cannon. And we got people that come in and we celebrate them. 
Yeah. So we had the whole cast of the plant in the building. They got a, a movie premiere coming out March 3rd, I think. I could be wrong, but it's on my page. Double check. And they um got a premiere for the movie The Coney coming out. We had the whole cast on the show, man. It don't get no better than that. So make sure y'all check out the show if y'all didn't. Check me out on my YouTube channel. Share the videos. And I'm out, guys. Who just checked in? Hey, Nathan, how you doing, boo? Y'all enjoy y'all Sunday. I'm out. If I can leave, y'all, I'm trying to be. <laughs> it won't let me go. I ain't got nothing else to say.